Hey guys, today I want to show you how I made this vertical succulent portrait in a DIY wood frame. I started off by building the frame first out of 1x4 common boards. I measured out and cut two pieces that were 29 inches and two pieces that were 22 inches. Then I screwed them together using construction screws and this is the first time I had ever used construction screws and I loved it because you do not have to pre-drill holes with them and they recessed into the boards on their own, making them easier to hide later on. So we now have the outline of our rectangular frame done. I thought it would be easiest to attach the chicken wire to the inside of the frame at this point. I used a battery operated staple gun, which made the job pretty easy, but you could use a regular staple gun if that's what you have. I worked slowly pulling the chicken wire really tight as I went and then trimmed off all the excess and folded over the sharp pokey bits. Next, I lined the inside with plastic and filled it with damp sphagnum moss kind of at the same time. There's probably an easier way to do this, but I think it worked out pretty well in the end. I draped the plastic over one end and then started packing the sphagnum moss on top of the chicken wire. And as I went and moved toward the other side of the box, I just tucked the plastic in along the sides. You do wanna make sure to pack that moss in as tightly as possible. So it's all filled in line, so then I measured the back of the frame and cut the size out of a two by four sheet of wood with a circular saw to create the back. Mine ended up measuring 30 and 7 16 of an inch by 22 and 1 16 of an inch. To attach it, I used the construction screws again and screwed it to the back of the frame. And I used a lot of screws here, like one every few inches to make sure it sat flush and was super secure. Before flipping it over, I attached the picture hanging hardware, lining them up with the frame for extra security. I used the construction screws here again instead of the smaller screws that came with the hardware because those just didn't seem long enough and we need these to be extra secure because this size of box can be heavy especially after it's been watered. The construction of the frame is done at this point. It was really fun to flip it over to see how it all looked, how it all ended up. Before moving on to the next step though, I did tuck in any extra plastic that was showing and then tucked extra moss into areas that didn't get packed in quite tightly enough. The next step is completely optional, but I thought it would be really pretty to attach some decorative molding to the front of my frame. And I found this molding that has kind of a leaf design on it, which fits this particular planter perfectly. I remeasured the frame and cut four pieces of the molding all with 45 degree angled cuts so they would fit together really nicely in the corners and then I attached them with wood glue and when you're doing this you're supposed to use clamps to clamp down whatever you're gluing so in this case the molding while the glue dries but I don't have clamps big enough I do have a pile of bricks though so I used a few of those set along the top of the molding to help weigh them down and keep them in place while that glue dried. I do like the look of the raw wood and I think it would be pretty after it had a chance to age and gray out a little bit, but in this case, I decided to stain it a darker color. I started off with a walnut color stain, but it just wasn't quite dark enough, so I ended up using espresso, which gave it a much deeper color. And you could paint this box any color you want. You could use different colors of stain, you could use a bright, fun color. You could really make it personal at this point. Once the stain was dry, I used an exterior wood sealer, in this case, spar urethane, to coat all the wood surfaces to extend the life of the wood as I do plan to hang this outside for the summer months. I wanted to create an arrangement using this really pretty watering can as a centerpiece. So I positioned it on top of the chicken wire and used a Sharpie to kind of outline it as best I could on the wire. Then I cut out the shape of the can using wire cutters, making sure not to cut away too much. Because like they say, you can always cut more off, but you can't put it back once it's gone. Once the shape was cut out, I removed sphagnum moss to the depth that I thought was appropriate. I could have it flush with the rest of the chicken wire and the moss or sticking out a bit, which is what I ended up doing in this case because I wanted that handle of the watering can to show. I used some paddle wire to wire the can into the existing chicken wire in a couple of spots so it was securely in place. So now I can plant and I started off with the largest succulent I had first, kind of my showstopper succulent, which was an Echeveria Cheviana. I used both rooted succulents and succulent cuttings in this arrangement and built up sphagnum moss in some areas so the succulents came out a little further than the frame. You just wanna make sure that the roots of the succulents or the stems of your cuttings are nestled in with moss around them. They need something to grow into to be secure and in this case, we're using moss as our growing medium rather than soil, which succulents do great in moss. And this is such a fun part because you can make it look however you want. You can go crazy with tons of succulents or keep it really simple, whatever you like best and whatever fits your style. In fact, you can scale this whole project to whatever size you want. You can make the box whatever size you want. You can use anything you want as a centerpiece or just make the frame and use only plants. The options are really endless. 
Now that it's planted, I need to let it lie flat for a couple months to give the succulent cuttings a chance to root in. If I tried to hang it right now, I'm pretty sure some of the plants would probably fall out. And since it's too cold outside still, I'm gonna keep it on a table under a grow light until those cuttings have rooted and it's warm enough to take it outside and display it. If we have company over though, I may prop it up in our sunroom to show it off a little bit. We do plan on giving you an update when we hang it, so make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss that. I'm excited um, to get that up in the sun porch where it's gonna stay. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next video.